Hello everyone, GAT Vector Sigma back with another Cyberverse reaction, and today we're going to be reacting to episodes 7 and 8 of season 1, and these are entitled Cube and Terminal Velocity. Uh, now, first things first, uh, last time we got to see Windblade fight some Seekers, which was pretty cool, and we learned that Bumblebee's escape pod was jettisoned from the Ark before the crash, so we don't know where the Ark is yet. And we also got to see Megatron, uh, his becoming the villain through Bumblebee's eyes. So we only got a few scenes of that, not the whole story, but I, like, I have a feeling it would be a lot more interesting from Optimus's point of view. Like, there would be a lot more stuff to see. But we, we got quite a bit there. And we got definitely the darkest scene of the show so far. Um, watching uh, Megatron damage Bumblebee's voice box. Um, not on screen, but, like, we know it happened. And it was pretty, yeah, chilling, actually. Um... So, I'd appreciate a few more scenes like that, because uh, it, it, it was a pretty good scene all around. And, yeah, just a really good, solid episode. Probably the best one of the series so far. Um, and as for this time around, uh, we have, with uh, the titles that we have this time around, um, I'm not sure what Cube is referring to, because... The Allspark was a cube back in the 2007 movie, but here it's an icosahedron, so I don't think it's referring to the Allspark. And it's definitely not referring to, to uh, Vector Sigma itself either, so I, I'm not really sure what's what it's referring to. Um, the only thumbnail I've seen for the episode has Starscream in it, so no clues there. <laughs> um... Maybe it's some other kind of artifact that has to do with the cube. Maybe there's some kind of mathematical equation that uses a cube or something. Maybe something is being compared to a cube. Um, maybe it's like a specific energon cube. Uh, that's that's about all I got. <laughs> um, but the next one is really interesting because terminal velocity uh, is usually referred referring to something falling, but I've seen thumbnails depicting both Hot Rod and Blur. And both of those characters are really cool, so I'm expecting a race, which is... Yeah, I'm right up Bumblebee's alley, and it should be a lot of fun. Um, racing on Cybertron and on Cybertron's colonies and a lot of other uh, continuities is a really big deal, so it, it would be nice to see that uh, transferred over here. So yeah, um, let's, uh, let's, let's actually find out what these things are all about, and we'll be watching in 3, 2, 1, play. Oop. B, this is pointless. I've <laughs> looked through all their files. The Decepticons huh. don't let their scouts know anything. There's nothing oh, on their computer but Decepticon propaganda, aerial maps, <laughs> and this useless training program where you try to hit a little white dot. Eh. Pong. <laughs> <laughs> Have you found anything useful? I've got a funky funky. Blow it all up. Uh, ah. A Decepticon triple barrel ion shoulder cannon. Can't yeah. wait to try this out. That looks useful. That's Reminds me of uh, what... Uh, Oh my god, okay. You. Reference to Transformers Prime, uh, number one. Um, but also, like, the gun that she was using reminded me of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, where Gamora had a huge shoulder can that she just ripped right off of a spaceship. That's what that reminded me of. Um, but yeah, the cube there definitely looks like an Energon cube, so... Cube! B! Don't you feel anything special when you hold it? Something that makes you want to jump up and down with joy? What are you trying no. to do? No. Am I in love? Love doesn't even begin to cover it. Huh. Okay. Let's see what he remembers about a cube. Think about cube. Oh. 
Oh wow, that's a lot of cubes. That's a whole lot of cubes. <laughs> Told ya. Let's see what one of these things is. Is it an energon cube or is it something to do with the? But you have to let me in. No. Is that? that is my everything. Is that Trailbreaker? Looks like Trailbreaker. Oh, Starscream. And some other, some cone heads. In we go, oh, and Windblade's with them. Huh? No sure. wonder. So if you keep walking like that, no one will see me, and you will be totally saving my spark. Really? Has this okay. ever worked for you before? We're seekers. We're on the list. Now let us in. Yeah, no voice for Trailbreaker just yet. Oh, thanks. Of course. On Cybertron, we jets are always well taken care of. You, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> just taking a walk that way. Yeah, no, Trailbreaker's not letting you in. Or that way. <laughs> or Bumblebee. I can't believe it. They picked me. I'm going to be the best cube mascot ever. Uh, no. <laughs> right. So... Come on! You're supposed to be out there already! Huh? Uh... Yeah, that's not going to go over well. Um... So, what is this? A gladiator match? Who, is, who or what is cube? So, it's nice to know, though, that Windblade was involved with the Seekers, like... She recognizes him. <laughs> and she realizes what happened. Come on! Like, speed it up! We'll get, get to the actual... Okay. Oh, it's a sport. Okay, interesting. Hollyhex, nice, nice name drop there. <laughs> nice uh, failure on the teleprompter there. So this is like a. Uh, in in Prime, they had um, God, what was that? Uh, lobbing. That was like a sport between wreckers. This is kind of like a combination of lobbing and. Uh, it, like like a combination of uh, lobbing and uh, Quidditch or something. Is what it looks like. <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> Oh! Enough already. Here's your costume. He just wanted to watch the match. <gasps> oh, I need one of those. <laughs> nice dancing cube routine. Thanks. Name's Bumblebee. You really don't right. seem like the type who'd hang out with those seekers. I'm not a type. So, like, seekers have a you know bad rap? I wish I could unknow him. He thinks he's above everyone else. Typical jet. Oh, ah. yeah, you're a jet. Uh, you seem different. Yeah. I'm new here. I'm from Caminus. Oh! I just met them a couple astro cycles ago. Oh, so they do have the colonies. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, one finger, please. Uh, I was you want one? just thinking uh, of a uh, different finger, but <laughs> I'm just on a break from the seekers. All they do is make fun of other bots. I don't really yeah. know what Cube is. Uh. No way. It's like the greatest thing ever. So the cube is full of energy, right? And it's got uh -huh. an eye. So it's so oh. And the point of the game is for your team to hold on to the cube long enough to Five. Four, three, two, um, one, absorption. 
long enough to. Okay. Oh no! Is this horn freak bothering you? No. Ouch. He's just telling me about. You don't need to be polite. And besides, he is bothering me. Starscream, you were always a jackass. Oh, you got name drops. I was about to just say that th that's what their names are, but yeah, that's uh. So they're like the jerk jocks of Cybertron, basically. Oh, Trailbreaker. That is so not what happened. I insist you throw him out immediately. Sorry. Huh. So I'm seeing the classism on Cybertron a little bit here. That might be what uh, Megatron wants to fight against a little bit. Bumblebee. What? Ah. Who is this? This is your ticket to the big game. Come to the back door. Your team just scored, by the way. What? Hey. I'm coming. <laughs> how did you talk to me in my head? I'm a city speaker. So, this is how they met. No, it's oh. really a thing. Don't tell anyone. This game is so boring. It's up to me to shake things up a bit. For the sake oh. of everyone, don't you think? You're gonna try and cheat, Starscream? Also, apparently the Coneheads are, uh... More brutish than the average Seekers. No, they're not. This is so easy! The AI in these cubes are designed by Scraplets! Just a few simple modifications. <laughs> oh, Scraplet's name drop, I just realized. This would be a game no one will ever forget. Starscream, you suck. You mess with me? I get it. But mess with my game, and you're gonna get it. I don't really get this whole cube thing, but I agree. Judge, rap <laughs> <laughs> So that thing's now like a bludger. <laughs> Dong. <laughs> oh no. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's holding on. <laughs> that looks like fun. Uh, sorry, tail tailgate. Absorption. Ow. That was, that was so fun. fun. <laughs> hey, you want to come meet some friends of mine? They we really are cute. Old oil house. Sure. <gasps> Mac as dance. As I don't have to sneak you in. That's uh, episode ten. But wait, I gotta know. Who won? Icon City or Polyhex? I don't know. All anybody remembers is your ride on that cube. <laughs> That's awesome! <laughs> yeah, hey, kinda is. You wanna play cube right now? I eh. to, but I'm not sure I remember how to play it. Me either. <laughs> well, I mean, it seemed pretty simple. You just uh, get the... AI in there and let it do its thing and you just each try and hold on and take whoever holds on to it longest. And obviously if you're both holding on to it, it's a tie. Oh, we're on, we are on Velocitron. So it's like a theme park. Sounds like fun. So we're delving into the colonies now. <laughs> nice uh, commercial there. I'm guessing that was one of Bumblebee's memories, maybe? Or maybe we're just skipping the gimmick entirely for this one. I don't know. Hmm. So, that's two of the colonies mentioned. Velocitron and Caminus. 
and ooh. I couldn't find any trace of that Decepticon signal. Oh, signal that they were uh, trying to. Why does the ship look different? It looks more I'm purple so than blue. Bored. Hey, they got it working. Nice. Oops. Yeah, explore your memories. But sometimes you gotta live life on the edge. Yeah, kinda, I guess, maybe. Okay, B. Find the fun. Uh. Hmm. Yeah. That does look fun. Racing. Velocitron. Oh, space bridge. Got it. Uh, so apparently that the network shut down when the war began. It, it looks like it belongs in a Sonic game. Hot Rod. We're going to have a blast. Good choice. I told you this planet rules. Now, where's your friend? Don't you mean his? I do like his friend. Voice. This nice. Hot Rod. Oh, nice paint job. Do those very IDW faster? Yeah, they do. Can't wait to get on the track and show you my tail lights. What are tail lights? I've never seen those on a racetrack. I knew you two would hit it off. So, <laughs> when and where do we race? Right now. And anywhere, obviously. <laughs> oh, who's this? Welcome to Velocitron. That's not Wheeljack. What's that guy's name? I know that guy's name. Tourist tracks, <sighs> but the best courses are off the beaten path. If you're up for it. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, is that a good one? God, what is that guy's name? It's so. Oops. Let me help you. No. Don't touch. Don't touch. What is? Are you okay? Fine. Thanks. Or He's rusting. About the plague of rust that has consumed multiple planets. Oh. Could that be? Hey. Uh, Hot Rod? Later, B. You've got some racing to do. Follow me, you two. See if you can keep up. Or are we going with the Align Continuities version where it's they shut down the Portal Network on purpose in order to, um, cut off the Plague of Rust? Okay. So, what's Windblade up to? Seekers. I'll give them a proper welcome. Go for it. Oh, Acid Storm and, uh, I don't know the other one. But, uh, nice. A lot more Seekers on this planet than we... Now is not the time. Too bad. He's already in there. So the, how many Seekers were on that ship? I guess enough to cover the entire planet, basically, in their patrols. Which, come to think of it, would be a lot of them. God, there's a lot of cool aerial battles in this show. Yeah, I mean, probably. It might not, uh... Seem like it at first, but I'm guessing it is important. God, what is that guy's name? Huh? I don't know. Look at this track! It's amazing! I could do this course with my optics turned off. Whatever you say, hot chat. That's hot rod. Hot rod, hot dog. Nobody ever remembers who comes in second place anyway. Are we gonna talk or are Ouch. We gonna race? Also, uh, Hot Shot is a different box. <laughs> different bot, I mean. Yeah, nobody's faster than Blur. Just accept that. <laughs> My guess is, though, Blur's gonna come in second due to, uh, whatever that Decepticon, or not that... Probably not a Decepticon at this point. Because, like, the war wouldn't have... What the hell? Are you okay? Forgot to mention, this part is under repair. Sorry, hot dog. You knew about that hazard? Home track advantage! Wait a second. 
Don't come to Velocitron if you can't race with the pros. Where I come from, it's all about who's the fastest, not who cheats. Uh, that doesn't look right, does it? No. Looks like a, uh... And it looks like it's been rusted out. <laughs> yeah, it's clearly rusted out. Alright. What's with that thing? It's just a road repair drone, but it's covered in rust. Ugh. That's not good. Maybe we should get out of here. Yeah, that's a rust plague right there. What's happening? Damn, that stuff works fast. Hot Rod, uh... <laughs> now this is the video game level. Anyways, Hot Rod is very... boxy. Oh, God. That guy was dead. Do you now? Somewhere that's not metal? I do like how we've got chase scenes going on in both... And, ooh, I like how the... The wings have folded up like that uh, for the dive. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Uh-oh. Silver Stream or Nova Storm? Um, get, based on the... Sh no, 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 they all have that nose cone shape. Hmm. It looks like the Wave Rider off of Legends of... The Tomorrow. Rust plague was only in the outer sector. Well, the rust is here, and we need a plan. We'll be safe here. I built this place myself. No way. I've heard about the rust. It consumes everything. We have to get off the planet now. B's right. We have yeah, to get to the space best, bridge. Best what? plan. I'm not going anywhere. Velocitron is my home. Red rust. <gasps> Red rust. <laughs> Well, damn, that guy just died on screen. I Shit. There, but you gotta be fast. I mean, they are three of the fastest spots around. Yeah, I'm thinking that's Nova Storm right there. So that way we can have, like, Firestorm, Acid Storm, and Nova Storm, and ooh. Missiles! Oof. Yeah, that probably hurt. Uh oh. <laughs> She's not giving up. I still can't tell which one is which. I It's lighter in color, so I'm thinking it's Nova Storm. It's everywhere. Down below. There's still a way out. Come on. Jump. Blur. I just saw it. It went on his wheel. Yeah, the jets can't function in space, can they? Wah, wah, wah. How do you turn this thing on? I mean, its power source is probably uh, corroded. Wait! We can't let the rust leave Velocitron! But that means someone has to stay here and shut down the space bridge. You two go. I'll take care of it. There's got to be another way. This is my planet. Besides, it may not have been fast enough back there. Blur! No! Who is the fastest? Come on, Bumblebee, get out. Holy shit! I'm glad that's over. Whoa! I was not expecting that. Okay. I guess we know the terminal was right. 
damn. Okay, uh... That episode got really dark. <laughs> I mean, I said I wanted that, but, like, I was not expecting that. Like, even... Like... I'm honestly not sure Transformers Prime would have done that plot. Like, Transformers Prime got pretty dark at times, but... Usually, it did not introduce named characters and then kill them off unless they were bad guys. Like, yeah, Cliffjumper in the very premiere to set the tone of the series. But, like, we didn't spend an entire episode with him. We spent about five minutes with him, and that was it. Uh, and then we, we did have, like, Skyquake and his twin Dreadwing and Breakdown... Um, but, like, th- those were all Decepticons. Um, and, like, the saddest one was probably, huh, was Dreadwing sadder than Breakdown or not? I think Breakdown's was ultimately more tragic, just because of the timing and everything, and, like, the plot lines that they had set up with him that were cut short, like, abruptly but fairly realistically and like just the fact that Breakdown was genuinely nice most of the time whereas Dreadwing was kind of a bit more sadistic I want to say most of the time like yeah I think I think Breakdowns was the saddest but like we didn't have that on the Autobot side we got new Autobots introduced and like they never actually died here, like, Blur was introduced, and we got to see him die, rust away, on screen. Like, damn. And, I mean, there were a couple others that we actually saw dying and rusting away on screen as well. Which is just, holy shit. I was not expecting that, and, yeah... The fact that, like, none of them were specifically uh, Decepticons. Like, these were all just either ordinary citizens or explicit good guys uh, dying. And that's... Damn. And who... What is that fucker's name? I know that bot that brought the rust through. I know him. I just don't remember what the fuck his name is. He's a a repaint of Wheeljack, yes, and, like, they've done it before. I'm going to pause and look it up, because I can't stand not knowing. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so it appears I was mistaken about the, uh, the, uh, nature of that character. Um, apparently it's not actually a character. It's just a recolor of Wheeljack's animation model. Which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, The closest I was able to come up with was a character named Slicer, but that doesn't quite cover it. It also kind of looks like maybe a, uh, like a, what is it, like a shattered glass version of Wheeljack, but still not quite there. And even if it was, it would be kind of weird to have shattered glass be a thing this early into the series. Um, And for those of you who are watching and wondering what the fuck is Shattered Glass because you're not actually a Transformers fan and just watching because it is a thing that I put out, Shattered Glass is like the negative universe of Transformers where the Autobots are evil and the Decepticons are good. That's it. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I I kind of forgot where else I was uh, besides just talking about uh, that Wheeljack character there. Um, Let's... uh, Let's go back to uh, the first one there, Cube, which was a much, much, much more lighthearted uh, episode. And, and it was a lot of fun. Um, we don't have a whole lot of information about Cybertronian culture, really. Uh, quite honestly, it's <laughs> it's actually pretty scarce on information, even in the comics. Um, so to have it established that Cybertron has a lot of sports like this. Um, 
and Cube being one of the most popular, obviously, is also pretty cool. And um, just more evidence of the classism there that Seekers think they're better than everybody else and apparently are treated better than everybody else. That's uh, worth noting as being a thing. Um, but uh, as for Cube itself, I mean, yeah, it's a fun concept. Um, I, I have to wonder, like, what the comparison would be between Bumblebee's antics there and the real world. Like, the closest thing I can imagine is someone streaking during a football game. <laughs> Which, admittedly, would be hilarious and would go down in history, but... <laughs> I mean, Im- imagine that. You turn on the television, you're watching a game of football, American or, you know, whatever the rest of the world calls football, which we call soccer. But, like, you're watching the game, and all of a sudden some naked guy runs in there and steals the ball. <laughs> yeah, you're you're going to remember that one for a while. <laughs> and I, that's, like, the closest analog I can come up with with this. And, I mean, it's pretty good. Um, I... I I, I do find it funny. And, yeah, just seeing how Windblade and Bumblebee met for the first time was honestly quite adorable. Uh, and and this was clearly before the war. So, yeah, um, combined together, it, it does kind of seem as though the space bridges were all shut down originally because of the Rust Plague, and then... Later, during the war, they were kept shut and slowly destroyed by the war itself. And that's how the technology was lost. Which is kind of sad. Um, it's also worth noting that this version of Space Bridges uh, makes it seem like they need to have a... Uh, like like a, a, a receiver at both ends. Which is... Something that I think has been in the continuity before in some versions, but not all of them, and definitely not the Prime and R.I.D. aligned versions. Um, I, I do think it was in animated, though, that they definitely needed a space bridge at both ends rather than just one. Uh, so, I guess that's pretty nice. And I'm trying to think of anything else about this. My mind just keeps going back to just how incredibly messed up that was that we just saw Blur disintegrate. Especially since Blur is usually depicted as being an Autobot who is on the side of the... Well, he, he takes part in the war and has a, a huge history with, uh, with the main characters throughout the war in most continuities but here he, he he's killed off really before it could even begun, begin before he even really gets a chance and honestly i i kind of like that deviation because it's it, it, it's kind of hard sometimes to tell a new transformer story because we have 30 years of different variations of the same story and all of them pretty much have the same start and the same end, and a lot of stuff in the middle is very similar. Um, so finding new angles and finding new ways to tell stories is quite nice. And here in this one, yeah, killing off a honestly probably I don't know if Blur is necessarily beloved, but he's very well known to Transformers fans, and just killing him off before he even really gets a chance to do anything majorly good, is... Damn. (sighs) Yeah. I just keep coming back to that. Uh, But there was a reference to uh, Transformers Prime in this one. Definitely, like, a very direct reference in Bumblebee's, uh, not dialogue, but his quotes. Um, I kind of choked around back in one of the earlier recordings, like, well, what if he spoke in quotes from previous Transformers series? And he almost did here. Uh, he very much sounded like he was going to quote Megatron in the Cube episode, uh, specifically the Transformers Prime Megatron, um, where in the Darkness Rising uh, premiere, Megatron was like, Behold the power of Dark Energon! And uh, Bumby said the first part of that quote and then switched it over to something else. 
So that's that's just really cool to me, and I kind of hope they do more of that. I probably won't recognize all of them, but yeah. It occurs to me now, though, that uh, all these different versions of Bumblebee that talk using the radio, they're basically Junkians. <laughs> like, that's how Junkians talk. It's kind of interesting because Bumblebee's never been associated with the Junkians in the past. Like, he's never even had that much interaction with them, to think about it. Like, not even in the comics, where recently the Junkians played a fairly big part. Like, the Junkians were on Earth the entire time while Bumblebee was on Cybertron. There's nothing there to connect them. (laughs) And there's nothing in G1 that I know of either. I mean, Bumblebee did survive the whole Unicron thing, so I guess maybe there could be something in the later seasons that I don't know about, but yeah, it's just really kind of weird that I'm only just now realizing that, and yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, But, no, the quotes, if, if he keeps quoting Transformers stuff, that would be pretty cool. Um... Beyond that, we did get to see Trailbreaker in that flashback, which was pretty nice. And two Conehead Jets, uh, Dirge and Ramjet. The third one being Thrust, whom we haven't seen yet. But it does look like so far we're getting three major groups of Seekers plus Slipstream. Or rather, it's... No, we're getting... We're getting Thundercracker, Slipstream, and Starscream, which seem to be one group more or less. Um... Because we haven't seen Skywarp yet, and it's starting to seem like maybe we're not going to. I mean, maybe we will, and he'll have, like, his own group that he's a part of. I I don't know. Um, But then we've also got uh, Nova Storm, Acid Storm, and I think the other one is Firestorm? I'm not really sure. I'd have to look that one up, too, but I'm not going to right now. Uh, And that's pretty cool. That we've got the Coneheads, the, this group of, like, Storm guys, and then also two of the original Seekers plus Slipstream. <laughs> Who probably, honestly, I would rather have had Skywarp and Slipstream because, like, Skywarp is really awesome and Thundercracker is not as awesome. <laughs> like, I, I, I guess, like, the character could be pretty cool, but, like, Skywarp can teleport. Come on, that's awesome. You're, you, you, the guy who makes really loud noises is just not as cool. <laughs> uh, so, I, I, I kind of would have preferred that. Plus, it kind of would have made it so that, like, you got Slipstream who's purple, you got Nova Storm who's purple, and you got Skywarp who's purple. So you got, like, the purple squadron over here, and that would have been really just hilarious. <laughs> uh, like, Fun times. <laughs> but, yeah. Other than that, we didn't re- we didn't see any, uh, we didn't really actually see any Decepticons technically in uh, these two episodes other than the Storm Seekers there. Which is actually a really cool name that I think, now that I think about it, Storm Seekers. Like, uh, kind of like Storm Chasers, but cooler. <laughs> um, either way, yeah, this was a pretty nice set. Um, was it my favorite set? I don't know. It might actually, I, I, like, last week's was really cool, or the last set, I mean, because it wasn't last week, but the last set with Megatron there and, uh, just the fight in the snow. Those were pretty cool. But, like, it here we got to see some Cybertronian culture. We got the confirmation of the colonies. We had the Rust Plague, which is a big reference. And, yeah, just the Blur's death is really just hitting me very hard. I hon- I'm honestly not sure which is darker. Like, Megatron tearing out Bumblebee's voice box like that is pretty graphic. And, like, it's implied that it's so bad that they can't show it on screen. But... They just saw, they just showed Blur dying, and I keep coming back to that because it's so unexpected and so yeah, just uh, 
I don't know what else to say <laughs> beyond that. So this one might very well be the best group yet. Um, which, if it keeps up, we have Shadow Striker is the next episode, which should be really cool. And after that, um, Macadams, which I haven't, which hasn't officially aired yet in the United States, I don't think. Um, so I'm I'm kind of waiting for that one to come out, or maybe not. I don't know. Depends on if it comes. Depends on if it's available for me to download tomorrow, or if I have to wait. I'll only do Shadow Striker, but it would be really cool if it was available tomorrow because I really want to see that episode. Now that we actually got it teased in this set, um, Bumblebee talking about the old oil house where he and his friends hang out. Uh, yeah, that's obviously Macadams. If you're a Transformers fan, you know Macadams and you know what it's referencing. And it, it would be really cool to have... Um, just have that in here, especially because it's a perfect opportunity to retell the stories of the ancient primes, which we haven't actually gotten that part yet in this continuity. And I'd very much like to hear their version of it because they, they've got a great mix going on here with some IDW stuff, some aligned continuity stuff, some G1 stuff, and even some stuff from like animated and the Unicron trilogy a little bit. And just all around, it's it's a very nice mixture that I really, I really do appreciate. Um, cause it's it's unique but familiar, which is like the best thing ever. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to the next group or one, whichever. But for now, uh, I don't really have too much else to say with this. I'm gonna sign off. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see y'all next time.